I brought Bobby in. I want you to know we're going to start off today's lecture, which, by the way, is on the more sciences than the Necronomicon. But the question with the question and answer period for about a half hour. But before I pray about it, I want you to know that uh, I have several things that, that, that I'm working on for the very near future. I'm uh, planning a, a trip to Chicago in the uh, middle of September. The Art Institute of Chicago is, is hosting an exhibit that they call um, Pharaohs of the Sun. They're dealing with the time period of uh, Akhenaten, Nefertiti, and Tutankhamun. They, they have over 400 uh, objects that they got from the, uh, what they call the Armana period. And um, what, 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 what I've been doing is like renting a van, driving down there, you know, the hotel to be hooked into. And I've talked to uh, Dr. Delbert Blair. And what we'll do is we'll go through the Art Institute, check out their exhibit, and then leave there and go to see Dr. Blair and have him break it down from, a, from the correct viewpoint. Because, you know, the European archaeologists go there and they just get the skeletons and, you know, measure the size of the skull and stuff like that. They, they know people, you know. But, um, now, they don't know nothing, you know. So you have to go to somebody of our family, the melanin dominant family, to really find out the truth about anything. Even though white folks do have the facts, the, the, the raw data. Their interpretation is false. Um, on October, uh, October 1st, I'm bringing Dick Gregory to town. He'll be at the uh, Holiday Inn on Telegraph in Southfield. That's, that'll be a Sunday afternoon at uh, 4 o'clock. Um, the end of October, I'll be having a um, what I call a Physician Heal Thyself Festival, where we have uh, just vendors and uh, psychics. You know, um, it's, it's like my, my answer to um, the body, mind, and, and, and our spirit felt when decided to open the phenomenon has had every year. You know, we need to have one down in the city for us, you know. And, um, you know, you can find out more about those, on, about that, and, and the other things on my telephone hotline, which is 792-2837. You know, I've also talked to a Dr. Layla Africa. I'll be bringing him in the middle of November, November 17th. Could you do that number again, 792? Yeah, 792 That's the Jehudi hotline. It's a 24-hour telephone announcement service. And it works just like when we call the uh, movie theaters, you know. Just this the events, the dates, the time, the price, that kind of thing. So, uh, without any more for me, that's it. Today is Bobby Hammett. We're going to start off with a question and answer. All right, well, yeah, pull the libation. We're going to do the libation? Okay, good. You pull the libation, that's good. That's good. Okay. Um, I'd like to say it's always good to be back in the Motor City. Um, been hitting a lot of a lot of places this summer. L.A. one weekend, Cleveland one weekend. Just got back uh, last weekend at Trent in Philadelphia and scooped on through here, you know, bringing the stuff to the people and all. Going out west, going out places, you know, because... We talk about um, uh, uh, that whole frontier is almost 10 years behind the East Coast. Um, so, you know, going out that way and, and um, checking out the people out there and all, they really enjoy it. And I think that's sometimes uh, as we get closer and closer to the consciousness, we take things for granted and just come back down to the diehard fan. So, also, I like to say that, um, um, that it's, you can consider yourself very fortunate now, even if you are even interested in this type of knowledge now. With so much stuff going on, um, very fortunate. Um, right now they have a big con convention down in Atlanta with T.D. Jakes and all just literally thousands and thousands and thousands of black women. And this is not just on no T.D. Jakes put this together. This is straight up government. And the time it fell during the twenty, um, during the week after the twenty third, the rising of Leo and the whole rising of Sirius and all that type of thing. Um, the way it fell means in actuality that they're planning something to shut down a lot of feminine energy. We'll get into that later on also too. But uh, right now what we want to do is, is to do something a little different. Um, is to open up uh, open up the, the forum for question and answer. Uh, especially for the people that, that, um, that came, that has been here before and heard my tapes and all because a lot of times uh, 
the question and answer come and a lot of people leave at a certain time. And although we do have great question and answers, but I think it's, it's, it's good to break up uh, the monotony and just do things, you know, on a, a different way sometimes. This is 2000, so uh, what we want to go into right now is you have any type of, um, for the people, you know, uh, uh, any type of, well, it doesn't matter right, right now because we're talking about a think tank and a forum. So anybody that has any types of questions, you know, you know, um, and now is the time to raise your hand and, and get something out. Uh, what's that, brother? Yeah, bro welcome, brother. Um, yeah. It's a pleasure, mm -hmm. real pleasure to see yeah. you again. Okay, okay brother. Um, although our ancestors knew better to embalm or totally mummify high priests, they normally weren't, or yeah. not at all. Yeah. Has there been any remains, sure remains, or artifacts of Imhotep found anywhere? I don't, I, I've never seen any. Um, like I said, it's very rare to see high priests. Um, they got one down in Atlanta. It was one of the first ones I've heard of. They have the Ankhok Nakansu, which is the one that Crawley went in and um, uh, invoked the Book of Law from. They got his stella, they got his even sarcophagus. This particular priest, but they don't have the, the body. Um, they don't have the body. And I'm quite sure they have some priests. They have one that's been on, on display down in Atlanta from, I think, uh, January up until August. Um, January up until August, uh, up until this month, um, uh, next month. Um, on loan from Germany or somewhere like that and all. Uh, I would not think so. I mean, um, I, I wouldn't think so. Um, it was usually preserved for most of the Pharaonic aspect and all. You know, the Pharaoh is not necessarily the priest, it was honorary. You know what I'm saying? And that was done for a certain purpose. Uh, a certain purpose. Um, and basically the whole embalming thing is also to break incarnation, which is a, a, a very interesting thing you said. Let's say if you didn't want to get down here, and this, this, uh, uh, this is a known fact, even in India, let's say if you didn't want to come back, then basically what happens is with your soul, when you die, your soul still be, is still in your body. Your spirit leaves. There's a difference between a spirit and a soul. A soul is a whole other dimension that can just basically rest for eons encased in shit uh, out there in the bushes or anything like that until it's trapped in the physical body. It's a whole other world. It's a whole other realm. So what happens is, is when you die, your spirit leaves. Everything down there has a spirit. Not everything has a soul. Okay. A soul is a son. That's the difference between white people and us and animals and everything. Everything down there has a spirit. White people are spiritual because they have a spirit, but they don't have a soul. That's the difference. We just automatically um, um, think that a spirit and a soul is one and the same, or it all comes together. A soul is a son, a primordial son that existed long before the creation of this particular universe. There was prior worlds, and in order for you to have a soul, you have to exist beyond creation or a uh, uh, part of the original um, star matter or whatever, uh, of that particular terrain. Now, the mummification was, it goes like this. If your body dies, your spirit leaves and all of that, and maybe your consciousness of the previous life, but your soul remains in the body until the body is totally decayed, then it leaves. So the Hindus understood that, and which is also Typhonian Egyptians. So the, the Typhonian Egyptians, after the pre, which is your pre-dynastic Camite, traveled up into Mesopotamia, um, so-called Babylon, and these are new names and stuff, but basically Northeast Africa, on in the Indus, Kush, the Indus Valley, and the India. They would take the, they, they understood to release the soul, they would cremate the body immediately. You see, then the soul is released. Because they were dealing with trying to get a soul back down here for an incarnation, the way they would do it. The Egyptians, the Camites did another thing. If you were worthy enough and you didn't want to come back or whatever, they would mummify the body. And when they mummified the body because the body didn't rot, the soul would not have to leave and the soul would stay suspended in its own other dimension. And you know, so that was a way of fooling so you don't come back in the incarnation and come back down here walking around here with a bull can in your hand somewhere on some corner and used to be some pharaoh somewhere and now you walk out there some miniskirt on and stuff, you see what I'm saying? Uh, just ignorant. So they understood that particular part as a form. Incarnation can also be a prison system where it can take you thousands of years just to get back to incarnate where you got some sense. And in so many words, that's what's happened to our particular conscious people. So uh, to answer your question, I would, it would be highly unlikely. Now, the reason why I say this about the priest, the priest, on the other hand, they didn't need the mummification. 
They knew how to get to the other realms based on their whole spiritual apparatus, their whole spiritual training. You see what I'm saying? Plus also this. Some of the higher beings knew, and this is the key, this is why you're here today. The higher beings knew that um, it was inevitable that they was going to need to be back on the planet at a certain time. So it was like a time release type of spirit, whereas they would go back into incarnation. And they would bounce around for eons, always popping up as famous people or spiritual people throughout history, but nevertheless waiting for this particular day that we're in right now. So that particular one would return. So in actuality, the most higher beings went through the whole process of incarnation because they understood it was a destiny. You see what I'm saying? They understood it was a destiny. So more than likely, one of the priests back then that understood that they would need to be, a, be around at this particular time would more than likely travel the road of incarnation and just keep bouncing around in this hell. And the reason why I can say that because um, I just look at my past life. I was a priest one time, twice in Kemet. Um, twice in Kemet was one in Yemen. Um, um, was one in Yemen, and I have several incarnations, past life regression. But we understood that you would have to come back down at this particular time for this particular realm. So uh, more than likely, the M Hotel is probably that that particular soul is probably back on the planet right now doing something, um, um, doing something, and also it's it's, a, it's 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 a type of spirit that is prominent and known. It's not like a person that's just walking around like an everyday person. It would literally be somebody, and it doesn't necessarily mean that he's into this type of consciousness, but he's into some type of thing, whereas uh, he's known by several people based on either some political thing or whatever type. Yeah. Take case in point, Michael Jackson is a big spirit. There's no doubt about it. It's just that he just got caught up in some bull. And psychologically, it's all damaged. But spiritually, it's no doubt about it that you talk about an advanced being or what was Michael Jackson. We have to ask that question. But my point is clearly when you see the actual boy to even when we talk about Thriller, when we talk about the largest album in world history, clearly you're talking about a person that is an advanced spirit. Although his spirit gives the energy to make him great, his mind is messed up that keeps him dead or keeps him on that particular level. So clearly you can see that these particular spirits and all Throughout life and all, um, um, we see them all the time. It doesn't necessarily have to be consciousness. But on the other hand, I would, I highly would think that Tim Hotep would be back at this particular time to share in this process, more than likely. Just about what I know about just about everybody that's returning uh, that have already been in place. Either shared in the process of the past previous uh, couple of generations, because that whole wave of the 60s was a whole group of beings that came down for that. You see what I'm saying? You had a wave in the 30s. You see what I'm saying? It always comes up every 30 years or every 20-something years, you know, a, 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 a cycle. So you have a few now, and uh, unfortunately, um, the government has gotten real m much more advanced about it. But clearly, just for the mere fact that I'm standing before you talking, you know what I'm saying, um, uh, this type of information, uh, let you know that in actuality, they say some of the people that's supposed to be here at this particular time, uh, they saved them for last. You know, so more than likely, the hotel is back here doing something. Give you an example, um, uh, and this, and I got it from two or three psychics. Um, I was asking, I said, well, um, what about Akhenaten? And I got two or three psychics say, well, he's in Philadelphia somewhere. And I said, well, you know, but then again, that might sound crazy. But then again, if you understand incarnation, well, hell, if they are black people, then why wouldn't you be in Philly? Just like that thing said when we're talking about we are the same beings. You understand what I'm saying? So if you understand incarnation, then what is it? It's just incarnating into the physical body. Right. So he could very well be in Philly. You know what I'm saying? Uh, in Philly. And the, and the Hindus understood that. There's a story about um, this guy saying, I'm going to die soon. And um, it's also in the movie um, Little Buddha. He said, I'm going to die soon. And said, so they keep out from them. They, they take their hands and they would always, the other priests would feel in the air in some type of way they did. And they knew he was going to incarnate. And when he reincarnated back into this baby, they came and knocked on the door told the family this was a, a spiritual, one of my masters that passed a couple of months ago and he's back now. Um, because that, that's also a talent where you can come back as fast as you can. Because sometimes you bounce around, man, bounce around for 50 years before you come back, 100. Or 1,000 for some people. But he said, that, he said, you know, he died a couple of months ago, he's back now. I guess nine months before. 
And so they took the baby and took the baby to the Himalayas and took him to a certain spiritual retreat to raise him a certain way. You get that in the same movie, Little Buddha. He just ended up being a little white boy and all. The movie Little Buddha with Keanu Reeves came out in 1994. Also and, in Kuna, right? Yeah, you have some of that also too. Although I do believe that the Dalai Lama they have now is nothing but some type of um, government agent or some type of clone and all, you know. Um, anybody in their right mind would not say that you're spiritual and side with the most diabolical powers that be. It just don't happen. And also, too, remember this. No one is spiritual, no one, that's really got something going on they will ever show you on TV. You see what I'm saying? So anybody you ever see on the tube is either working for the government inadvertently and don't know it, or they are working for them as an agent and do know it. That's just the fact of the matter. They just don't put people. So any prominent figures you see, you say, oh, that brother's on, that brother's on, that brother's a sellout. Mm -hmm. Because they don't put, they got white people right now, they don't even put on the TV, period. They don't even let you know their name. Mm -hmm. So how the hell are they going to give you some black leader on TV? Uh, and also, you're getting off the subject, but yeah, that, that would have something to do with it. Give me some more questions. What's that? Yeah, uh, what's the, the deal with the, like, the whales and the dolphins, how they have like, a lot more melanin than the other animals? Uh, well, they, well, you know, uh, the whales and the dolphins are not, uh, they're, they're mammals. And in so many words, I said, at least the whales and the dolphins um, have incarnated souls. Because, you know, because uh, uh, we talk about some very advanced type, you know, communication and all that type of thing. But it's a huge mammal and all. So um, we do know that particular part. We do know that part when they beach themselves and all. Not necessarily based on nature. They got sick. They beach themselves because it was time to beach themselves. You see what I'm saying? Uh, uh, beach themselves uh, also too. Um, so we, we 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 know about that. What's what's that? I read a, a book where they suggested that uh, whales and, and dolphins were more advanced than, than we were or humans were. Well, in so many words, it's 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 not a matter of with some of the we share the same souls incarnated either in some of those advanced mammals. So it's it, advanced would not necessarily be based on. Whether they're higher than we are, it just advanced to be that their faculties in what the, what the body that they have, their intelligence based on the body that they incarnate in, gives them a greater opportunity to be much more spiritual or psychic or whatever because, you know what I'm saying, because, um, because it's rooted in a certain terrain that, that allows that. But it's basically the same souls. You see, it's basically the same souls as ours. You know, as ours. What's that, bro? Okay, uh, I got a question. Uh, considering that these uh, Europeans are making a, a movie such as The Matrix yeah. that are based on melanin, yeah. uh, do you think they've learned how to harness that uh, the real power of melanite yet? No. And if, um, no, and then also, what information can you give us on how we can go about trying to okay. find how to harness that power? Okay, it's a good, good question. That's a lot of stuff we're going to deal with today in this, in this particular lecture is dealing with that to pinpoint that actual discipline also too. Um, number one, the, 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 the answer that based on the matrix, you got to realize these people have got 150 years in the occult sciences. That's just on the revival of it. We're talking about over 700 years of what the Moors left them, which we're going to also get into. This ties right in. The Moors left them. This, these people are not for a lack of knowledge. These people have people, they busted the government, so-called. They always give up some stuff. You know we can't do nothing about it. Just to make us happy, like we in order. Back in 96, they came in and they said the government had spent almost uh, uh, $10 million in revising history. They said, how can you revise history that's going to take $10 million? And in so many words, what it was is that's the department that it was under. In actuality, what they did was the government, they got people in the room, by probably many, many people in this room, and what they do is they sit around a table and they read every single book that comes out. Let's say breaking down novels, because other stuff is kind of explanatory. You know, you get into it, you can literally see what this person is coming from, what he has science. But let's say the novels, because a lot of novels are coming based on uh, 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 people get channels. And they're inspired to do those things. So they have to have these people up in there to sit around and read damn near every sci-fi novel, every horror novel to come out, mainly sci-fi and horror, so that they can understand the, the concepts of where these people is also coming from, uh, are coming from. So in actuality, um, in actuality, um, they spend billions of dollars in just research alone on this particular science. 
Um, the whole mainstream thing is no big deal. That's basic metaphysics 101. It's just it was a great to us. They put the karate stuff up in there. But basically, um, basically any um, Hindu text, any Hindu text, Mahabharata, Upanishads, Rig Veda, all that goes into the whole thing. And this was an illusion in Maya. You see what I'm saying? And all there's a whole book on that whole thing. Came coming from the Hindu text out of uh, University of Chicago, Dreams, Illusions, and Other Realities by um, O'Flaherty book, as well as her book, the uh, Rig Veda, um, no um, Hindu myths. So there's tons of stuff based on this being an illusion. You got Michael Talbot's book, Holographic Universe. You got Seeing Through the Visible World by June Singer. Um, it's just tons of books out here, and that's basic metaphysics 101. So when they put that out to the general audience, now, but they did an excellent job. But basically, um, basically, uh, most of your, 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 your Hindu texts deal with that whole thing. But this is only an illusion in this whole thing here. We, we dealt with some of that. We'll go through some of that also, too. So that's what they did on that particular part. Now, based on the, the, that, that particular energy, when we go into the particular science today and all, um, you're going to find out just about everything that the Bible tells you not to do. That's what you need to be doing. And as well as, um, you must fight against being righteous. Because righteous just means obedient prison. You see what I'm saying? So just about everything it takes that to do, and let me give you an example. One we'll get, get deal with today is um, lust, sexual eroticism, and sexual pleasure. It's supposed to be explored to the highest level. That's why... Why the hell you think the government, he didn't stop no Bibles, he didn't stop no Christianity, he got a church on every corner, but he stopped the sexual revolution of the 70s with the AIDS scare. Why did he do that? Why didn't the government do that? Because they understand that it is the, the power of this particular realm of the power we're talking about is sexual energy. And it's, this is hitting real spiritual because that's what we're going to go into today. And that's the stuff we need to be dealing with. But I'm not just talking about on some beautiful romantic level. We talk about freaky stuff that you got in your mind, other than the gender crossing. You call homosexuality or whatever type thing. We're talking about the most erotic things that you have. Everybody has these things, but you are trained in this society not to deal with those things. You see what I'm saying? Especially the women, who is the greater vessel to deal with this type of stuff and all. We'll get into that particular part also, too. But you're trained that if, if, if you give away to your, your, your passions and your... Um, your, your passions and your erotic desires that you're a freak. This is a patriarchal society and it's done to shut down a certain feminine energy. Also, we're talking about, we're talking about sexual tantra, raising certain spiritual energies to a certain level. And this is the way of action and this is actually the power. This is the actual the power. You, what is the kundalini energy? The real power is nothing but the kundalini energy. That's what the real power is. Uh, the, end of the, 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 the flip side of the kundalini energy is the black dot, you saw the, the black dot, which is, uh, uh, you see the staff of Tahuti. Then you have the two serpents, which represents the kundalini serpentine fire, but you have the black dot, it's the end piece. Well, the real power is nothing but the force that goes to that particular black dot. And then the, through the black dot, it's synthesized into this particular magnificent force. The key here is, what is the kundalini energy? It's sexual energy. It's sexual energy. You just feel it going down most of the time, but it's the same energy. That's all it is. You see what I'm saying? So the whole concept of someone telling you, um, so that's that whole thing of 2,000 years ago. Well, make them, tell them about Jesus, but they can't become Jesus. So therefore, you tell them about some man out here, which is yourself, but you don't give them the art. To tap into it to find out that they are the actual people that the whole book is talking about. And there was never no person running around no 2,000 years ago. You see what I'm saying? There was no Christ. It's false. It's the biggest hoax in world history. You see what I'm saying? That's why it's on every corner. Even the Yeshua Ben Pandero, when we tell we're going to trace a historical person back. That historical person could have been a very political person. But, he, but as far as what the Christ does and details... It couldn't have been. It's, all, it's impossible. And I've said this before because the Christ itself is preserved for the end time. That's why the Hebrews, the Egyptians, the Greeks, the Rome, the half of the Romans, and everybody in the ancient world other than the doggone Roman government that, uh, that started the whole papacy put this bullshit out. It's impossible. You see what I'm saying? So even if you, you see the whole concept is uh, back in 91, um, 
uh, at Pasco's Hotel down in Atlanta. Somebody asked him, um, asked Dr. Ben about Jesus. And he said, Jesus? I don't know about who is who, who? Say Jesus. He said, I don't know about no Jesus. <laughs> he, he said, no, you know, we, we understand he was a black man. It was like, um, he was like, no, what about no Jesus? And you know Dr. Ben. <laughs> You know, he taking this person a roundabout way and all to let him think. And so one guy feeling sorry said, listen, we understand about Yeshua Ben Pandera. Gerald Massey talks about it in Gnostic and Historical Christianity. His, uh, uh, historical Christianity in, in the, in the, uh, in the Gerald Massey lectures as well as Natural Genesis Volume 2 talks about also the historical Jesus mystical Christ. But he said, this is the person when they trace something back to a person that was executed by the Roman government, a political figure or a revolutionary figure. This is the person that they trace back to say it can line up with a certain story. But the other one is mythology. Turning the water into wine, walking on the water, Lazarus, which is Osiris, all that shit is mythology. And, it's, and, and uh, mythology and stuff. As a matter of fact, this is so interesting because what we're going to get into also today is, do you know, um, this is interesting, that when you trace the original Christ back, there's several Christ figures, but when you trace all of them back outside of Jesus, all of them are identified also with being aspects of the devil. Even harvest, it's in this month, here's Satan. You see what I'm saying? You got Sheba, Satan. You see, all of them, so obviously we're talking about somebody taking the polarities of the yin and the yang out, the light and the dark, the, 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 the destruction, and the, the flow of time, flow of energy to create, the flow of energy to destroy, which is a both, both dual natures of Christ. And, and, and trying to put it to this particular figure that they created a couple of years ago, um, uh, a couple of years ago. So going back to this particular power, this particular power we're going to deal with is based on sexual energy. That is the way of action. I mean, we get you, yes, we get all of the other energy, and you can get the visions and all this type of stuff here, but we're talking about here a power that's, it, it, that, that, that is based on sexual energy. We're going to get into that also too today. Give me some more questions. Uh, any more questions? I know. Yeah, what's that? The Atlanta childbirth. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I was told today my, uh, my neighborhood mm -hmm. is still going on. The Ku Klux Klan are still abducting young men. Probably so. As you know, it's interesting. Now I'm down there in an election back in 96, yeah, 96. Sister stepped up to me in the election. She said, you know, one of my children was murdered. I said, oh, man. I said, you're the first person. I've been here about 15 years. I never have a, you're the first person I know that, that I actually met that, that, that was the mother of one of the children. She said, they came and got her and took her to the place where her daughter was, and the daughter was still living. She was telling me this in the election. And she said, the daughter looked like she was about 80. I don't know if she was, I don't know, eight. She looked like she was about eight. The experiments that they was doing on her. And so many words, they couldn't say anything. They couldn't say anything or else they would die. They said, we kill everybody in your family, kill your mama's mama's grandmama's mama. Ain't, ain't much to scare no black people up. Um, so, um, but basically the experiments they were doing on the daughter, the daughter was like, she was like 80, 85, and she was only eight. But the woman was telling me this like literally in the lecture, you know, um, in the lecture on um, on this happening. So, yes, it's all it's 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 it's, it's experiments. But see, this is the key now. Anytime you do some stuff, that's an orientation. Whenever you saw that happen, that sets up a catalyst or it sets up something for the rest of what they're going to be doing in the future. So, in so many words, they're doing that all over the country. You see what I'm saying? That was just the incubation period of um, of, uh, uh, <coughs> of of what went down in, in, in Atlanta. You see, so they're doing that all over the doggone country. So that's one thing we must keep in line, mind also too. But like we said, interferon. We talking also the cloning thing. They a lot of the cloning of black people, learning how to clone black people. Um, more advanced technology in that particular stuff came out of Atlanta child murder. Let's see even in your book, uh, uh, see, because they always put stuff in the book. The book, um, uh, the guy, the, the universe guide to the, no, the, the guide to the Star Wars universe. Excellent book. Because it goes into all this stuff of sporadic cloning cylinders. 
with the Clone Wars, all this stuff, and you know, all that, you know, um, George Lucas and all them worked for the whole, worked for the whole government and all that type of stuff. Even went to Princeton to uh, your boy down there in Princeton to even teach him mythology. Um, what's your boy, uh, uh, Joseph Campbell, to bring that whole thing about now? Because we sit up here and all, when we say the word myth, and you go, that's a myth. Yeah, you you taught that myth is a lie, but yet. Try to get a PhD in mythology. You better go try to goddamn build some rockets. Because I believe you, you, the PhD in mythology is a little harder. And uh, mythology is very advanced stuff. You can translate it for 20 years. It's like O'Flaherty said. She said, I translated the Rig Veda, Upanishads, Mahabharata, Ramayana, and all those books. For 20 years, and I'm going, I'm still translating, I'm getting several layers of understanding each time I translate it. Over 20 years. Over 30 years she's been translating, and her recent thing said, I'm, I'm still baffled. On the same text I started 30 years ago, I'm getting three times as much stuff, because we're talking about something written by an advanced race, or what they call a sage race, and that was our particular people. Now, going back to that, the whole thing with this, uh, the whole cloning thing, in that particular book, the, the, the guy to a Star Wars universe, it tells you that at first they couldn't clone people with the force. Now, the force, as you know, is identified as a real power, melanin, kundalini energy, all of that. They said first they couldn't um, clone people with the force. And it was only until later that they uh, did some things that they were able to clone people with the force. So in so many words, although you're thinking it's a Star Wars thing, literally the government is literally telling you that they had problems since 1945 when they started this thing. You see what I'm saying? Um, they started a group of this stuff thrown and messing with black people in the 70s, but by the amount of child murders, they had the shit down pat. So as a result of after the amount of child murders, you see what I'm saying? Shoot, it's robot central now. You see, so a lot of stuff came out of that. It's not just not just the interferon, but these things when you see is multiple things. It's the same as the uh, the whole Tuskegee experiment. Um, Tuskegee experiment. Now, anybody know that's ever been on a farm or been in, been in the country? Bacon don't taste the same way the stuff you get at the store and the stuff you get when you slaughtering some hogs down there in the country. It's two different things. It tastes almost like fat bag or some type. You know, that's because they. But but in the uh, in the Tuskegee experiment, they had black men tasters trying to find out the best taste that they could do with bacon. And as a result of the best taste, that's what the whole world now is using that made bacon go from just basically, it, it made bacon a phenomenon. You see what I'm saying? A, a, a everyday meal. But that happened with the dog on Tuskegee experiment. So the, so the whole round of child murders was more than just the interferon. Oh man, I'm sitting up here with my, my pants unzipped. <laughs> <laughs> they was enjoying it anyway, man. <laughs> Damn, that body's so intriguing. <laughs> My pants unzipped, ain't nobody saying nothing. You know, I, I mean, I'm in the election in Atlanta, and they sweating because electricity came when I saw somebody had me a tissue and a piece of patch of paper sticking on my damn head. Your roots in South Carolina with your whole Gullah people. 
There's a whole book out on the blue roots that just came out. Um, um, let me give you the name of that person. To get you now, it's interesting. Now, I had the funny that in all these years we've been talking about roots of these white people finally put out a book. Uh, it's called uh, The Blue Roots by Roger Pinckney, African American Folklore and Magic of the Gullah People in South Carolina. On um, 1295, New Ellen Publications. Blue, the blue, it's called Blue Roots. Roger Pinckney. Um, excellent little book. It goes into uh, your boy. Um, Dr. Buzzard and that whole nine yards. I mean, I actually went to college with a brother that's Dr. Buzzard's grandson. Um, was his grandson, Brother Pledge Kappa and all, you know. And every time I come to the lectures in Harlem, he's always at the lectures. We real good friends and all. And I'm like, and I used to say, yo, man, so I see you. He's like, oh, shoot, man. My family been into this kind of stuff. And I'm like, hmm. And then when I went back, when I went to, when I went home, my man said, you didn't know. He said, that's Dr. Buzzard's grandson, man. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> I said, well, I know, I'm going to tap him on the shoulder a few minutes and all, you know, and get some of that power. But anyway, they had this whole roots thing going on, but yeah, we got 2,000, and this is the only leftover type of magic, although we have all types of things we carried over from Africa, but we talk about a, a system, it's not the greatest system in the world, it's some of it is deteriorated, but still yet the shit works. Right. Well, nigga, put a root on your ass down there. Yeah. You fucked. I, I know. <laughs> I know, I got family members. My grandfather died off some roots. Yeah. One of my, um, my, my, my grandmother's sister died off some roots. But the point is, is this is the year 2000. So therefore, they got to go down and they got to do something to, to direct attention, attention away from the most amount of black people in the country in the state of South Carolina. Mm -hmm. South Carolina has the most amount of black people in any place in the country. They got towns in South Carolina where they outnumber the dog on whites, mm -hmm. 10 to 1. But the whites always running shit. Mm -hmm. They make sure of that. You see what I'm saying? Whole counties where it's been majority black. Because they had one of the greatest slave ports down there in Charleston and different things like that. Fort Sumter, the Civil War jumped off down there. So based on the Civil War, based on this roots thing, they got to divert their attention away and they come with that old bullshit flag and all these stupid ass niggas <laughs> running down to a doggone flag and say, please don't let us know that you don't like us. And took down the flag, and they didn't even know, and they thought they did some shit. The crackers said, let, let's let it cave for a minute. Let's let it go. Let them boycott. That way we made like we cave it in. This shit is all set up. They laugh at us. We were world-class people still marching. <laughs> let them, okay, okay, let's see here. All right. Give it another month. We ain't going to cave at all. Let them cut their few conferences. Let them like a damn cracker need your conferences and need your dollar bills. Motherfucker print money. They don't even live off money. Right. We're the idiots that think that this is this way, by wealth and power. That's a fucking joke. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, okay then, now, maybe like you caving, put the flag behind the state house. Meanwhile, they doing all that, they diverting some people's <laughs> attention from some major shit they was doing down there for 2000. And nobody never know because that's how it is. We are animals. And what they do with an animal is just like anything else. You herd them the way the hell you want them to go. Right. Because we have stopped using our minds, a brain atrophy. So the key here is all of this particular stuff that's going on, or uh, uh, going on, don't. They gotta be a group of people that don't even pay no attention to that shit. If a nigga get drugged down the street to hell, I'm not gonna march for no nigga get drugged down no fucking street. <laughs> you figure we done had about ten thousand black men to die in the last ten years? Well, that's ten thousand they count. Hell, they took what eleven thousand alone out of L.A. riots. Got rid of. Disappeared. You know what I'm saying? And yet we're going to march for somebody that's going to the electric chair that killed a whole bunch of people and just so happened he, he got sent to jail for the ones he didn't kill. Right. But that's a fucking issue. Come on. And even if he was innocent, there's something that you don't beg your enemy to redeem you or to free you. Otherwise, that wouldn't be an enemy. There has to be an enemy. That's, the, that's what the movie said on the movie, um, the movie uh, uh, Thunderheart. He said, some of us have to die. This was a thousand, he said, well, he said this was a 300-year-old resistance. We can't break the goddamn resistance by saying, oh, please, master, lighten up on me. That's a prisoner of war. So if I get up in there and don't have no marches for me, black political prisoners. Somebody said, you know, we got Brother Bobby, he was out there speaking, and now they got him on death row, and we're going to do I said, look, look, I'm going to come outside the prison and say, look, damn all y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Let me die, right. 
and let the man kill me because that's the most honorable thing you can do. Right. Until you learn how to kill his ass because we don't ever go on offense. <laughs> but the key is, is we have to die. Right. But never ever beg your enemy to spare your life. Then he has one up on you. Then he can say, now I can appear to be humane, which he's never is. You see what I'm saying? So all this stuff is a diversionary thing that is going on. The Mississippi shit that's going on. The, uh, you know, all this stuff, and, and it's going to have more and more and stuff. But then again, on the other hand, we don't, we don't analyze nothing. So therefore, how would you know? And he understands this. There's a, I got a book here called Melanin People, <coughs> How to Eat Them and How to Drain Drink Their Energy. I got it in here. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a... Uh, uh, hold on one minute. Uh, melanin people, how to eat them and how to drain their energy. How, melanin people, how to eat them and divide their energy. A white Luciferian group reveal their secrets. Are you selling those? Yeah, um, yeah, I'm selling these. Uh, ones I got. So I'm saying they do all types of things with nothing but subjects of the government. And the more educated you get, the more better subject you are, the more vulnerable you are. Because you think that you got something, and you think that you've made it, so therefore they can really stick their dick up your behind. You use the expression, but you know what time it is. You see what I'm saying? And that's what it is. Uh, and uh, the more vulnerable we are, uh, the more vulnerable we are. Uh, what's that? Yeah, let, let's go on for a libation and get get this through. Oh, okay. <laughs> Take it up to another level. You know? Oh, okay. Uh, all right. I got you some water over here. Oh, okay. And um, as I'm talking, we're going through some things. Like I said, uh. Um, so this is the way that they do things. Everything that's going on, that you think, never look at the news as anything bad. All of it is manufactured. And you shouldn't plot your course based on what the man give you on TV. Now, I, I have to say this because it's, 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 it's coming. Now, I'm sitting on the, on the steps back in 95 down in Atlanta at his brother Juju's house. A helicopter come and shoot this Negro 14 times. Don't even make the news. Yet they got a person being shot 45 times, and they got riots and marches and all that kind of stuff. They shot it 14 times. You know they kill niggas every day, right. and it don't even make the news. Now I'm down there, this black man jumps in front of the train. He, he must have jumped right at the right speed. He must have jumped. His speed was enough speed, and the train speed was enough speed, because it wasn't nothing but just guts and blood. Splatter like a uh, tomato. <laughs> Didn't even make it. <laughs> Didn't even make the news. Now this is in the, the, the main train station, I mean, um, 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 centrally located in the middle of Atlanta, blood everywhere. But you best believe they had that shit quartered off, heard new people out, people going, what's going on, you can't see nothing. You see what I'm saying? But the original people, I said, well, I know this going to make the news. I see the blood. Mm -hmm. Didn't he make the news? So obviously what makes the news, they got shit that's been going on in the 1930s, 1940s. You don't even know you've been on this planet. So is this the planet I live on? How did, I didn't know nothing about this. And all of a sudden you think something making the news? Because, because you think they got the reporter? And I kept telling you, and you know, one thing I did learn based on my um, ex, um, I'm getting my libation on this, man. Getting on, based on my, um, uh, my ex-girlfriend, um, she worked at the, at the main paper. And um, she said she'd have a meeting every morning. If it ain't planned, the paper, if the government or whatever say this ain't going, you better not put nothing in that paper. That's right. And, uh, you know, the stuff. So it's, it's all foolishness. And I said, my ex-girlfriend, I, I just newly, I have just newly become a, 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 a bachelor. I don't want to say most eligible bachelor. <laughs> I am the brokest man in the Western Hemisphere. Well, the shit business. I ain't got nothing, nothing but some damn sex and some buffalo wings. <laughs> So if you talking about some unappealing shit, you, you say, you know, I want a man with money, I don't fit the damn category. You see what I'm saying? If my mama was in town, I'd move back in with her. You see what I'm saying? The judge said, you going to feed them kids. I said, hell, I'm hungry my damn son. Just so, just luckily, I don't have any children. But the key, what I'm trying to make is, is um, I have to put this on the thing and all because, it's, you know, you have to clear up things before the, before the news get out. And, I, and before I put this, I want to say one thing that's very important. <laughs> oh, no, hey, hey, yeah. you, you yeah. on your time. I want to clear this up. You're on your time. But what happened was, is my, my ex was 11 years younger than I was. I met her at 20. And uh, so uh, I met her at 20 and I was 30, 31 or whatever. And basically, um, 
the last seven years, I mean, we had a relationship where we didn't even argue. She's a fan psychic. She's into all this stuff. All this stuff I know, she knows this stuff. Very conscious, very psychic, and, all, and then she, she turned uh, 27 on May 13th, but about, about a month before that, she's like, um, hell, I never, she said, I, I went from the house, went to school, and I, shoot, I've been with you the whole time, shoot, I, I want to get out and just chill on my own. And the spirit was like, to me, it used, you know, oh, you're so messed me, and I love this woman. I was like, I think you better do that. Right. Because I was thinking like this, if I deny her that, and I know all the hell was going to break loose. Right. Right. See, it's one thing, you don't have no argument. That's some scary shit. You and your girl don't have no argument. Right. Right. But I said, wait a minute. Now, and I thought, so I, I'm, see, we got to think on a high level. We can't think on the selfish level. I said, well, right. wait a minute. I said, uh, I parted from age 14 to damn 30. Right. You know what I'm saying? I said, I couldn't even imagine if I would, I couldn't even imagine, you know, being with somebody in those incubation years or whatever. And some people say, well, you know, I did. I said, but it might be another whole generation. Right. You see what I'm saying? Shit, we talking about the dog on rap generation, Pepsi generation, <laughs> like my man said, the damn chaos generation, Generation X and the whole thing, apocalypse culture. So basically, I said, like I said, I, I said personally, I think that you you need to get out of here too, because I personally, you know, right. you know, I it's a damn adjustment, you know, but sh on, on, on my part, but I'm like, yeah, you you right. Plus, I'm like, you know, um, because I said if you don't let her go, because it might just be that thing in the head that. Damn, what if I just went out here, you know, you know, what if I, then I said, well, no, you better go see. Right. You see, so uh, uh, other than that, I be, uh, immediately became a, a bachelor the last two months and shit like that. Right. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, well, I got a lot of, well, I got wealth, I got a whole lot of knowledge. Right. But money-wise, shit, this, 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 this lecture thing has not paid off. <laughs> <laughs> but then it was a, it, but it, I didn't get into it for that, though. Right. That's, what, that's the saving grace of it. Right. It was a labor of love in the first place, and I would have it no other way. Uh, another thing is also, too, what's going on also is, um, um, and I was in L.A., and I mentioned that about, the, uh, about my girl gone and shit, boy. It was on then. It was on then. <laughs> Shoot. So they gunning. They gunning and all. Extra smiles and stuff. <laughs> You know, one sister, she stayed, she said, I'm going to figure out an angle to get this number. And she figured out a way to get the number based on some spiritual consultation, and she booked up. I said, oh, okay. But anyway, um, but, but anyway, um, I this is another. my libation list. Oh, yeah, you should have. Um, anyway, um, what happened was, is, well, I can say some stuff off my head, so it doesn't matter. Um, I got a real good one also, too, uh, a voodoo one we're going to do also. I got it in a book. Um, in this book called uh, uh, that New Orleans Voodoo Tarot deck, which is an excellent book, uh, also too. Um, also, um, they got some stuff going on here with Operation Dirty Tricks. I did a lecture down in Atlanta um, on the 18th of June, and they had five helicopters flying around the doggone building. And I'm like, it was called a Voodoo Chaos. Uh, what was the one you? What's the one tomorrow? It's called uh, Voodoo Melanin War. Voodoo Melanin Wars. This was called the Voodoo Chaos Wars or something. Anyway, they they got they must have been scared as hell because they had five helicopters flying around the doggone building. But I noticed something at the beginning of the year. It's like get Bobby Hemet, and so it's this new thing, Operation Dirty Tricks. Mm -hmm. Now Operation Dirty Tricks was started with also a Malcolm X, but then again, they can't get me for the simple fact that I'm already hooked up. Right. They mess around and shoot. <laughs> Uh, and, I'll, and I'll explain what I'm talking about. I got it in, in a book here uh, also, too. You just got to know the power you have. There's certain people they can't kill. And this is all scientific also, too. Um, but I'm just noticing the Operation Dirty Tricks because they're not, the government ain't trying to do nothing. It's just that they got the Negroes out here trying to dog on play a hate, <laughs> as they say at all. And the third thing, so this is what's going on here. Operation Dirty Tricks is what they did with Malcolm X, whereas intercepting his letters and coming there and tell a lie. Mm -hmm. and make the people mad, and so they spread these rumors. Right. So we had this big conference down in Atlanta, a whole lot of stuff, a few things went down, a few comments went down. Uh, um, we call it Brother Conscious Rasta, but really, it really, nothing really actually happened because I was here the next week. Nothing actually happened for the simple fact that it didn't get a chance to go off because I came with the voodoo energy. <laughs> And I had the vey vey's and all the milk, and, 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 and I had the rum, uh, which is good, see, it's spiritual, I had to talk, because I forgot that rum, and I'd have been in trouble. We're going to give out some, um, 
We're going to get out some rituals for the sisters that need um, to love rituals because that's one thing also too, is, is the, 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 the black woman's uh, the black woman's uh, love life has to be fulfilled. And she it, it makes a certain amount of power right. when she's in love. That's your thing. You operate good when you're in love. It's just that the motherfucker's in prison when your ass is in love too. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let nobody fool you. Right. If we, if we know what the it is. Right. But you know, therefore, but then again, we are subjects. Right. And that's our thing. We are subjects to the mama. Right. So, so uh, but um, what I want to do is, is I'm that. I just wanted to uh, dedicate this particular lecture to my sister that made her transi transition in March. Okay, what's her name? Gwendolyn Sims. Uh, Gwendolyn? Gwendolyn Sims. Gwendolyn Sims, that's good. Falasha Day. Falasha Day? Mm -hmm. That's uh, solid being named her Falasha Day. Falasha Day. Gwendolyn Sims, Falasha Day, made the transition. And uh, so we want to dedicate the lecture to her. That's always good. Anybody ever have some shot out on somebody passed on, right. we dedicate the lecture to her. Uh, to them. Anybody famous or anybody, you know, not just anybody famous and all, no corn ready nigga, but somebody, you know, <laughs> you know like that. Um, thanks. I need somebody to run upstairs and get my, that, hey man, get, run up there and get that other bag, that, that, you know, because I, I uh, get the other bag. But anyway, uh, we're going to give out a, a good uh, love ritual for the sisters that need some stuff. And the reason why I say this is because the spirit came and said, now look, we, we, we're losing the men, the black men, to the white women in record numbers. Yeah. So the only thing we're talking about doing is just taking some shit and giving them an attitude adjustment <laughs> to come back to the system. Right. And so therefore you have to go and do your magic. That's what the magic was for. The magic was not necessarily bending someone's will. It was giving a nigga an attitude adjustment when they went insane. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And then we're gonna give you one that's a very powerful one if the nigga wanna act funny. Uh, and, uh, you know, also too. But um, uh, the spirit came and said there's over um, 10 million black women without mates. Right. Now, by being raised in a family with all women and all, I look at that and I say, you know, that's some horrible shit. Yeah. When you think about it now, because you are socialized in a society for love and romance, and that, you know. Yeah. You know, so therefore, when you don't get that, that has got to be a traumatic thing. Right. You see what I'm saying? Now, my ex-girlfriend, um, uh, uh, she had a, had a guy, and it was interesting. I'm, I'm flowing, but it's good. Amen. I had a guy who was interesting. Now, she, uh, my, this, uh, my ex-girlfriend, real cute. Not, not, the, not the one that just left. But, <laughs> uh, but, but the one prior to her, real, real cute, real cute woman, and brilliant based on her mind and all. She's an expert on the goddess and all this knowledge. Uh, both of them now, all the ones I'm with and all, they hooked up on this knowledge chip. Right. And she was an expert and we were actually learning together. And um, so now the guy likes her. Now she's real cute and all, but the thing is, is that has nothing to do with the way she looks. This guy is used to going with these tall models. Just another type of prototype. And so, um, but the thing about it is he's in his 40s. And he likes her because he likes her mind. Right. See, he, see it's, it's fucking him up. <laughs> see, he likes her mind, but he has this image of this woman burning him. And based on the whole ego thing, that's the woman he thinks he wants to be with. But he, when, he, when, when he ends up being with these women, he says, you are a fucking idiot. <laughs> okay. You see what I'm saying? Because he, he likes the one that he's with. Right. You see what I'm saying? So I was like, look, you have to get that nigga that attitude adjustment. Right. I told her what to do. And sure enough, homeboy is real content. <laughs> you see, so it's not, a, it's not a matter of that now. It's a form of insanity. Mm -hmm. And it's a form of programming on the TV set. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And I said this program before when I, when I um, 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 left college. I was in college from 1980 to 88. All the 80s. <laughs> I was about to get my, I said, God damn, you're going to get your pension up in here, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I, I left. So long, I said, you know, I don't even know how to live out in the outside world at all. <laughs> I said, shoot, man. I said, at all? And so I said, this is the adjustment period. So I flew home. I was going to do the shoe thing. I was going to, and, and so they, the, the guy called me to come to New York to pick my shoes off the wall because I was doing the shoe designing thing at the time. So the Jew bar called me up and all and said, I'm going to give you your check. So I had a lot of time to burn, so I went home for about a month. 
and I watched a lot of cable. Now, I was in black college, black college, and from 1980 to 1988, I ain't saw nothing but a black woman. And to the point where, as you can program your mind to the white woman looks alien. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because all the suits, you know, the white woman looks alien, because that's all I was around. So it's a programming mechanism. So I, I went home for about a dog on month and was watching that cable, watching that cable, watching that cable, because it didn't have nothing to do. I said, well, damn, it's a month before, um, they, you know, uh, a month before um, I got to go to New York, and they had kicked me out of my house in school. Nigga, you got to go. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so I'm watching all this cable, and all of a sudden, I could see an attractiveness in the white woman, just psychologically. And I, and I had to stop myself. And the reason why I could notice, otherwise, not to be in program saying, well, you know, all women are beautiful or whatever. But because I had gone eight years in, 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 in a college environment with all sisters, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know me talking about all sisters. God damn, that's paradise. Mm -hmm. And then so I could actually register when it hit. I said, wait a minute, there's some shit going on up in here. And that's how they're programming people based on this whole standard of beauty bullshit. Mm -hmm. And they got the man insane. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Insane based on this doggone foolishness. <clears throat> you see, so it's a whole lot of stuff going on program-wise. And so we got to curb that back. Um, 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 curve that back around, so therefore we got some rituals from the University of Chicago coming out of ancient chemistry. We'll get into that type of thing. Um, we'll, we'll get into that type of thing, as well as some stuff I'm going to also give out. You see, also give out. Um, got one for male pattern baldness too, uh -oh. coming from the um, um, the Europa thing, but because we had all kind of science for that. You see what I'm saying? So uh, uh, we had all kind of science for that type of stuff. Alchemy and stuff like that. So we got one there, and, all, and it's real simple. You know, <laughs> candle and some some coconut um, milk and some stuff like that. We show you what to do, and also we now in since the 2000s we actually going for the warfare and stuff. We're giving out all kind of magic stuff that we gotta use and stuff like that also. Too. What's uh, that? Uh, could you tell me about the uh, the baldness and the center of the head of the female sometimes? Um. Well, you know, it could, it could be a What's several that? things. It could be psychological. It could be psychological. It could be psychological. Um, it, it could be psychological. It could be ge uh, uh, geographical, or it could be also based on like Blair said. Now you're being bombarded with tons and tons of rays and stuff. That electric disease. As a matter of fact, this book here, based on melanin, this particular book here is based on melanin. It could be a series of things. I don't want to be unfair and, and say you know, no. but. But the point about it is, this book called um, uh, Melanin, Your Own the Body is, uh, your Melanin, it's called uh, Melatonin. I talked about it the last time. Your Own the Body is a uh, new wonder drug or something. Um, yeah, Melatonin, Your Body's Natural Wonder Drug. Your Body's Natural Wonder Drug, Natural Wonder Drug, Melatonin, by Richard Russell J. Reader, Ph.D., and Joe Robinson. And in this particular book, they got a section in here on all this top doggone stuff that affects melanin. Now, you know, your hair is all hooked up with the melanin thing. Mm -hmm. And all, you see what I'm saying? And they got this, the, the type of electrical appliances that affect melanin. And it's down to everything in the house, mm -hmm. everything in the society. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it, it, um, every, everything in the society. So it can be several things. But don't worry about that because we got magic for that shit. The problem here is the white boy has convinced you that your stuff don't work. Now this is very key because what happens is this. He has had our stuff since the more 700 years. He's had some some stuff on a resurgence of this type of magical material. He's had all he's had all this stuff um, since um, at least 140 years. And they got all these magical papyruses and texts and stuff, and they say, damn, these people were geniuses. And this is advanced science. Right. Now we know it's science. Well, what we're gonna do is this. We're gonna make the, make the public think that all that is some mumbo jumbo, right. and voodoo, crazy yeah. shit, yeah. witch doctor stuff. Right. Meanwhile, this stuff works, mm -hmm. but we don't have the mathematical equation of the chemical equation for it. So what they'll do is they'll hang on to something for a hundred years until they somewhat try to break down the equivalents in what they call their physical science based on what was taught to them also, but to what you think is white. So until they have learned how to explain it white, mm -hmm. they'll tell you that your shit don't exist and it's all crazy and stupid. Mm -hmm. And then they'll all of a sudden come out with it and you go, oh man, that damn white man is hell. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know, he's been studying this thing. It took him a damn 100 years to break down the codes, but he had to 
you 100 years ago, say, do this, do this, do that. All right. But no, he's got to break it down in his little old thing based on his doggone little educational arena. So when he comes out with it, you think that he is God. Right. right. Okay. When you're the fucking God. Right. Mm -hmm. You see? So this is the way things go. So there is something for everything. Right. Now it's interesting you because cause cause the Spirit gave me this shit last week. I gave me this the same thing last week. And it said, well, when you go to Detroit, say this. And then I, I say it and all, and you, 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 you ask me this question, oh, we got the dog on kill. We got a cure for everything. We got a dog on kill for everything. We got, um, as a matter of fact, um, this particular papyrus here uh, uh, has a cure. They, this one here cures everything, even delivers a person from death. <laughs> Providing that person want to come back. Because I had the Jews, when I went up in the funeral home in 94, I was, the, I, my kundalini energy was, it was, was so high. When I went up in there, I said, I'm bringing this brother back. And my girl, you know, she's psychic. He came and talked to her. I said, let me talk to you, because this fucking asshole about to talk to me. The brother came and said, I just got killed outside a damn crack house. Why in the shit would I want to come back down here? Right. When I'm chilling. All right. Where the hell I am with everything I wanted down here, I got just based on thought. Right. Manifested. Yeah. Why in the world would I want to come back down here and end up back out of some damn crack house? With half a brain now, because now the body ain't even working no more. Right. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So my, my, my point is, is but they got them, they got memory spells, they got all types of things. And this is the type of stuff, spells for dreams, spells, there's two or three love spells up in here also too. But I'm gonna give you one that's a uh, real. I'm going to give you one to go along with this one. Or you don't even need it. Real good stuff works, too. But we'll give you that one also, too. Um, we'll, we'll give you that one also, too. Um, but uh, we need to get back into the magic and the practitioning stage right now. And I'll promise you, whatever you want, I might not have an answer, but all I got to do is just think it up. I'm telling you now, I can... It's, the power done got to a point that I can think of a damn lie. <laughs> I can think of a lie and an hour later the shit come true. Yeah. Yeah. But then Dr. Devil Glass said that there's no such thing as that. If it wasn't real in the universe, your mind couldn't perceive it. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So I'm saying we've got the power to do it now because this is what time it is. You see what I'm saying? Anything we want. Long as we, while we still linger in here, which is very short, but we we, we need to do those type of things. So let's go into uh, let's go into a, a libation thing right quick. And what I'm gonna do is um, let me just get I, I get one uh, thing and I'll just go off the top of my head. But um, y'all all right? Yeah, yeah, it's good. Um, it's it's it's, it's always good. Um. Let me get, let me see if I got some of these some big heads. I got, oh, I haven't even got my shirt up in here. <laughs> uh, that's my underwear. <laughs> that's all right. Y'all probably watched many of them, so. Uh, yeah, I got some of these, um, big beds and all. If, uh, for the people that's here and all, I'm going to pass these down. I'm going to put one here. And, um. This is the vey vey for uh, the leg bar. Now a leg bar, a leg bar is the god of the crossroads. Any energy you want to come through, you just call on a leg bar or issue and get you some Maya's rum. You some Maya's rum. And uh, Maya's rum or Appleton rum, anyone from Jamaica, they kind of like that. Because let me put the damn, that Bacardi down, and it'll sit there for a whole month. It won't even drink it. Put the Myers down, it's going in three days. You see, Myers rum. And um, now this is also good if you're driving in a car and you don't have no insurance. <laughs> I got a, a, a homegirl in, in Los Angeles. She spit this thing four ways. She, she was on the road, and the cop stopped her. She gave them an insurance policy from 1970. Man said, move right along. <laughs> So you got to do the energy on this type. Now, this is magic. This is our spiritual aspect. Now, to break this thing down so, so you don't think this is all hocus pocus, let's break this thing down scientifically because you ain't dealing with some just some, some crackpot out here. Let's break this thing down scientifically. All this stuff used to have mathematical 
and scientific meanings thousands of years ago. Just so happened that the culture might have deteriorated and might have deteriorated and the priest or the scientist that was dealing with it at that time went underground and died out. But they still have the elaborate rituals on top of the ground. So although the actual scientific methods might be lost, it don't necessarily mean that it was no more scientific than you sitting up there with some doctor plugging you up the behind that don't know shit. Okay. Remember, all black people come as guinea pigs to the doctors because they don't know stuff, and they especially don't know stuff when it comes to you because melanin changes. That's why they can never know your physiological state. Even if they map your shit out 10 years ago, melanin always is in a state of flux to go to the next level. Transmutation. So therefore, even when it comes to that, they might not know your shit 10 years later. So the stuff they learned on you in the 70s, it's changed. We know niggas has changed. Hell, you know five. <laughs> I don't know who the hell you are no more. You a damn fool. Right. <laughs> Right laying in the bed with you. Nigga done changed on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said, you don't know this man, I don't even know who the hell you are. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. But then again, that's what time the universe is in nature and everything is changing. Yeah. So they don't know nothing but dog on guinea pig factory. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And whenever you come to them, thinking you don't get help and all, they saying, yeah, um, we need help. And we need you to tell us about help. You see what I'm saying? So we do that too. So um, I have the uh, Vez. Um, this is a this is, it, this is a minute. You can pass these out. This is the leg bottle. You want them um, back? Huh? No, 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 no. I'm gonna pass them out. And give them to her. <laughs> it's just. Excuse me. I have another question. Huh? Why do black some black folks have tend to get white splashes? You know, Texas. You know what? That's based on diet. Come to find out. That's based on diet. That whole white thing based on, because I had a friend, uh, Nathan had, you know that the white patches and stuff. It's not the whole, uh, what they call it, what they call that, that disease on. Huh? No, it's not leprosy. Huh? It's like the bird in the top of your It's not leprosy. It's not leprosy. Uh, leprosy. Uh, leprosy. Vitiligo. Vitiligo. There's a smaller part. You don't get the main bit of it, you get every now and then. That's, some of that is based on diet. I had a friend, he blue black, and he had one right here. Back in 94, 95, and his diet changed and it went away. Really? Yeah. That's so that's got something to do with diet. I thought it was hereditary. Well, then we go back to that other thing. Yeah, see what I'm saying? Yeah, go yes, right back to that other yeah, Right, thing. exactly. So we're not going and there. Then, yeah, exactly. That's diet. another meal. Hold that one. Uh, well, uh, so uh, that's the, uh, oh, somebody, well, let me see. How many did, did, did they have? They had two of them. Yeah. They just yeah. passed those. Yeah, and uh, you can pass well, some of those and get past this. This is Urzuli, the goddess of love. And uh, so you're going to need that for the love ritual. So y'all motherfuckers who got somebody, don't take one of these. Right. Save it for the sisters who don't. Right. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, I'm, I'm, if you got one, just, if you ain't got nobody, save it for the sisters who don't. You know, so if you got somebody, you know what I'm saying? Just pass it on to a sister. Raise your hand if you ain't got nobody. If you got somebody, then if you if you, if you, if you get, if you don't have nobody, take one of them with that with that with that uh, heart on it. And the ones who got somebody, now you just have to wait the next go around till that nigga kick to the curb. <laughs> you know. So let's. Uh, what we're gonna do is right now, I'm gonna go into the invocation of a leg box, and then we'll go into this thing. And tomorrow we'll go deeper into this voodoo and chaos wars. Now remember, now no greedy now. If you, if you ain't got nobody, then take one. And we'll go into some of that. You got somebody, you have to wait the next go around. If you, but if you still have the babies for the uh, leg bar, yeah. you can pass those out to everybody. <laughs> you know, you pass those out to everybody. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to go into that stuff also too. So stick around. I'm going to go into that stuff also too. Uh, you know, and don't do. And I had to tell him man, what you call it now. When you, when I give you the love, bitch, but don't do the damn shit on me now. <laughs> I have to preface that. I have to preface that now. Because I had to tell him in California, now, I'm going to give you the love ritual, but don't do it on me because you know I'm single now. You see what I'm saying? Your, your ass will be down in Atlanta working hard. <laughs> working, take care of me. I'll be sitting on the stump like them niggas out there be sitting up there. Why? They say, what they say? I'm going to go get her. What's a go get her? Every day my wife go to work, and every day at 3 o'clock I go and get her ass. So don't do the damn ritual.
ritual on me now. You know what I'm saying? Don't do the ritual on me. You see, when I give you the love ritual and all, like I say, homeboy is seriously broke. Right. You see what I'm saying? Now they, you know, you know some stupid stuff. Now they, um, I paid the water, I paid the lights, and I paid the, and I got tripped up and I didn't pay. I think you know how you get the bill and you thinking the way they told me you get about sixty days, and I'm thinking I got a week and I mess around and look at the bill, read the bill wrong and only and it, and it had and it didn't have a date on it, but it had right up at the top. Last notice, and, and somehow I didn't read the top of the bill. Okay. So they come, they cut the gas off. What the hell is fucking? It's the summer. Fuck, I can't. Right. So they cut the gas off last week. I'm like, well, and I had I had three hundred dollars in my pocket, and I'm like, man. But I said, it's summer. And I said, well, dang. I said, well, dang. The hot water off though too. <laughs> <laughs> And I said, let me improvise here then. I said, and for the dishes, I can put a pot on the stove, boil the water, throw it up in there, wash the dishes and all, and I, whatever other thing I can do that. And I said, well, you know how it is with a cold shower. It's freezing until you get up in there, you know, like five minutes. And five. So the last, and so, but, but I was flying out to go to, 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 to New Jersey, and I said, well, damn, I don't want to pay the bill today. They tell me 48 hours. I said, well, if I fly out, some say, no, you better wait till you back home. Because if you pay the bill and they come and cut the gas on that hot water heater, that gas is going in there. It might explode something. I said, I, I'm like, well, what else? So, I, so the last week, but I've been gone, so I, I, I left out of town the, the day after they cut it off. I came back um, in uh, yesterday, so I had to go jump in the damn shower for a minute and get that, you know, in about five minutes. But we improvise and stuff like that. So my point is, is this here. Get used to a whole life of that kind of shit and you're going to try to hook up and do the love ritual on you. The boy is broke. The boy is broke. So you won't have nothing to say. Well, it be love, but you know how the love thing go. That, that's good for about a month. I'll give it a month. 20 days or whatever. Like they say, 30 days. You see what I'm saying? I'll give it a month. Then when the bills start piling up, then you can kiss my behind. So it's like, so we're going to go to the invocation of Ishu. Ishu is the god Tahuti in Kemet. He's the god Tahuti in Egypt. He's the god Elijah. It's a form of that in, in Christianity. Um, Enoch, anyone that, one that comes before Christ. Um, John the Baptist would be a part of that in Christianity. Emirates in Islam. Um, Merlin. And the grail mythology, we're going to get into all that today when we go to the more science. And um, uh, I'm trying to think. It's also his name is Ishu. So you either say Ishu or Alegba. Now, this is the one that you've been doing, the, you know, the ones with the four pennies. Right. Oh, yeah. You know, you put the four pennies on each corner on a Monday right. and ask for the money, and the money right. comes about seven days later. Right. Find this out, too. Put the four pennies the next, next Monday. Put the four pennies face down. Okay. <clears throat> and then get you some of this wrong and blow four ways. Okay. Mmm. It's good money. <laughs> so we got that one, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, and blow four waves yeah. and stuff like that too. I know it works. Uh, it works. I know. That, I, did. That one I already did the other yeah. one. Yeah, that works. I mean, you know, that works. Also, we had the brown bottle ritual. We talk about the brown bottle ritual, how to keep somebody off your behind. That worked, didn't it? My mama be putting it on the ass. She got a closet full of brown bottles. She be putting it on. But the key here, I, I'll go into that in a few minutes. The key here is, is check this out. My ex-girlfriend, the one that's not prior to the one that just dumped me, but the one before that. She said, well, why don't you? She, said, she, she made a good observation. She said, wait a minute. Why don't you use the brown bottle? You used to keep the niggas off you. Why don't you use the bill collectors? <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Right. Good, good observation. You know, bill collectors and these people just hassling you. Right. You know what I'm saying? And you know we got that. We black people. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we know what time it is with that. And all, you know. Uh, so uh, we're going to do the invocation of Ishu at this particular time. Ibaku, Ibuku, Malambu, Ishu, Ibuku, Marambu, Ibuku, Ibuku, Marambu. Ami, Kanti, Ibuku, Ami, Aku, Marambu, Iku, Kala, Abaku, Marambulu, Omoli, Ku, Ibuku, Marambu, Omoli, Ku. Now, when you get the, if you ever get a hold of this invocation and it don't sound this way, you know it in actuality. I'm, they know how that shit sounds, so right. I'm just going the best way I, right. a Negro from South Carolina read this shit right. from some African stuff, so, you know. Right. Ibuku, Marambu, Aku, Ishu, uh, Kaluna, 
Ashi, Abiku, Malambo, Ashi, Ishu, Kaluna, Abiku, Marambo, uh, Amoli, Ko, Iku, Ashi, Orono, Laro, uh, Ankon, <laughs> sound like Chinese there. Yeah. <laughs> Laroli, Ishu, Kanala, uh, Ishu, Koma, uh, Komo, I, uh, Ashi, Okono, Lea, Akono, Lea, Akushi, uh, Ibala, Gana, Ishu, Loro, Aka, uh, Aka, Loro, Aroli, E, Aroli, Akun, Akuno, Loroli, Akuno, uh, Aroli, Akuno, Le, uh, La, Gana, Eroli. Okay, that's the invocation of Ishu. Uh, now, let me do one thing. Uh, I'm going to blow this four ways. Like I said, this is my eyes when they really like this. You say some big drunks now. And such, such, such. You know you, you, you know the people out there that you the people that you didn't like and the people that you was glad to get the hell on? Maybe your fucking ancestors now. You see what I'm saying? Right. Plus there's also something metaphysical about the whole drunk thing. You know, Jesus was a form of the wine or right. the wine. Right. And that's called used to be called spirits. You understand what I'm saying? It used to be called spirits and all. We'll get all into that type of stuff also too. So let's let's blow this uh, uh, consecrate this room with this. You can also do this every morning, you can put it in four corners of the house. Um, we'll go into that also. And, uh, and I don't like being myself. <laughs> it's interesting because I got a lot of people in the land, they're like, yeah, hey, but I've been becoming a drunk off this shit. <laughs> I say, 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 I
I mean, it's evident my man that sold out. He, he uh, called Billy Graham up and apologized to him. And it's evident my man sold out. I said, but that's not the point. The point is we got all this profound knowledge and we know that our black people right. will go and they will manifest and stick only to that particular petty shit right. and all the other stuff will go out there. That's, right. that's what you'll be remembering. I said, so I, I told, I told Colin right before the next, I said, look, I'm through with it. I said, I got all that stuff on tapes and all, but I said, I got six hours, eight hours on the tapes too. Right. And you remember this, I said, so I already know black people, we programmed to go to the lesser repertoire. That's right. And that's what we gonna stick on. So I was like, I'm through talking shit about these Negroes and all. I said, because guess what? You have a nigga to talk shit about every damn minute. That's right. Because we all messed up. That's right. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, so I said, I did, I've done my whole deal on that type thing. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no, I'm, I'm still kind of laughing with this million family march shit. <laughs> you marching in 2000 is an indictment. Right. You know what I'm saying? But that's a whole nother lesson. But anyway, I mean, some things need to be. You need to address that. Right. You see what I'm saying? I ain't talking to my man personally. I'm just saying that that's a conflict of damn interest. Right. But the point is, is this the whole Operation Dirty Tricks thing, you see what I'm saying, on the way they do things and all. So I see a lot of this coming up, and I'm telling you, because the government is scared now. Right. I believe so. They scared now, and they got them running scared now. So what it is is they got the little ponies and stuff all out here. And what it is, it won't even be somebody else will make the, the statement. And then the statement gets back to the other person. And somebody make a statement to them what they said about me and they get back to me. And after a while, you know what I'm saying? Now I saw, ain't nobody stepped in my face and said the shit to my face that, 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 that I suppose, you know, call it ain't came to my face or nothing like that. Right. So, but all of a sudden these rumors are circulating. And that's all based on our Operation Dirty Tricks. And you best believe the government is behind that also too. Right. So I wanted to also put that out also too. Um, put that out also too. Now, going back to this particular part based on, um, this T.D. Jakes thing. The T.D. Jakes thing is based on um, this. Uh, they know that, they know that, uh, they know that the black woman is one of the heart, is based on the energy. The book of the law said the scarlet woman, with her all power lies. All power lies in the scarlet woman. And it's talking about the female energy, a nest of power. Um, they know that time is getting closer and closer to the wee hours, or what they call the great day of beat us, or what we call the great ass kick, to the powers that's been screwing us over. Right. We get the last laugh. Right. You see what I'm saying? So they know this. So as a result, they know that the person that they got to get the mind of is the black woman, because they, right. they demolished the damn black man. And right, shit. they got him. That motherfucker was looking for a soda pop somewhere. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. I mean, I mean, so my point is that they, they need to get the black woman, so what they do is that they activate, activate this whole, all this whole preacher thing. Right. So they got a preacher in Los Angeles. This man is in Los Angeles. He got a church they built in. It looked like a Colosseum. Mm -hmm. This thing is $70 million. Denzel Washington goes to the church. Um, Magic Johnson, mm -hmm. Brandy, all these old doggone Haitian yeah. head yeah. yeah. niggas go there. <laughs> they pumping in money. $70 million. Now, let's look at the magnitude. Okay. There's somebody over here in Spain looking and saying, hey, look at this. These people here. They in the heart of Crenshaw Boulevard. Mm -hmm. They have already had this like a damn Beirut over there. Mm -hmm. All these black people died. You get your hands on seventy million dollars, and you don't. You know what seventy million dollars can do economically? Seventy <laughs> million. Hell, Walmart started out in a damn horse and buggy. Right. Bill Gates didn't have no seventy million dollars. Right. Them people said, hey, "Can you loan me some money, my friend over here?" Bought some money from this one over here and put this stuff down. Ralph Lauren started out with, uh, at his kitchen table mm. with some fucking neckties. Mm -hmm. And here it is, you get $70 million and you let the white man come in and charge you for a building. Right. It's not even $70 million that you go put based on the economic structure right. of the church that would be a community based type thing. No, just the building alone. I know. Now here it is. <laughs> People around the world say these people ain't did shit for themselves. Right. Ain't got a pot of piss in the window to throw it out of it. You get your hands on. You as a community, the church amassed seventy million dollars, and you throw it in a goddamn building. Right. Can you believe 
Do you understand the horror and the insanity this thing is about? Right. Whereas nothing short of murdering these people would be good. Right. I mean, I'm telling you, this is, a, this is an indictment. I saw this church it's right there on Crenshaw Boulevard. It looked like, I mean, I saw the, um, um, it looked like the Coliseum in Rome. A later version. You saw that thing? Amazing. You can say to black people got some shit like that going up? $70 million. But well, see, that's the government behind that also, right. too. They say we can show these people as savages. Right. You say, what's a savage? I ain't jumping around no bone to know. A savage is a person that in the late 20th century cannot have analytical ability to think their way out of shit. You got literally brain shut down. You just going on based on emotion. Right. You see? You got the T.D. Jakes thing going down. I, I almost got sick. I'm in Atlanta yesterday. I said, well, I'm going up to this place and all they sell the Japanese, Japanese stuff, you know. You know, have somebody cut some shit up in front of you. Don't be going to them damn Chinese and eating that dog and shit. That's why they say, they say, now, go to the, that's where the white people, they don't fuck with Chinese no more. They go to the Japanese. You, that Benny Hanna stuff. I said, we go down to the Japanese and they'll cut up some of my stuff. I go to the mall pack, it's just all these thousands and thousands and thousands of black women. And they got the T.D. Jakes thing on. Now, what this thing is, is this is a government thing. Because what they're doing is, is they're taking their mind and directing their dog on mind, this whole thing based on Jesus and the prosperity shit. Right. You see what I'm saying? Which is a total brain shutdown. Why would you even want to even worship a God that would have prosperity for you and don't have prosperity for other black people that you know worship God even better than you do? Poor right. black people worship God more than I know some holy sanctified people and they worship God on TV Jakes they got shit on them. Right. And they still poor to this damn day. Mm. <laughs> Eating hard bricks and all kind of shit. Right. So I don't want to hear that. But it just takes analyzing stuff. And they got all these thousands of so-called black people and they're not even using their brains. This is a form of mind control. Mm -hmm. And they're doing it during the summer solstice months because they know that based on the 2000s, and all the life I'm saying, when the black man rises up in the south, it's all over. Because this was the last people to get some smarts. Right. That's why it's in Atlanta. And in the middle of the summer social, the white man know that you can open up and raise to a certain level. They got this nigga down there with thousands. They got your woman, thousands of people following a damn T.D. Jakes. Mm -hmm. And what's that? Who's T.D. Jakes? T.D. Jakes is this preacher that bust out on the scene, what, mid midnight? Yeah. You know, uh, just, just, huh? Yeah, the lady that love a woman off the house. You got plays, this is all kind of stuff. They got him, they got a guy, they got him. It's more than they got one called Creflo Dollar. It's real plain. They got Fred Price. Now, Fred Price has got so jealous of the man. See, this is, this is insane. Fred Price got so jealous of the man building the $80 million, $70 million church. He said, damn man, I'm going to buy me a 747 damn man. Yeah. He, went, he said, damn man, I'm going that shit. He went and got him a DC-10. Yeah. Put an airline thing. Yeah. Do you understand these people are playing with black people's lives yeah. and they get rich off of it and it's almost a mockery. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's almost a mockery. Yeah. I'm going to kill him. Soon. We we'll put it on the tape, right on the goddamn tape. I'm going to kill the ass. And fuck any damn nigga saying some shit because the Lord ain't got nothing to do with this shit. That's right. You see what I'm saying? It ain't got nothing to do with that. These niggas got to die. All the lot of said, he said they're going to kill these black people in the last days. Mm -hmm. These black preachers are giving them one of pieces. Right. There's certain images out here. Direct them images to them doggone niggas and let the damn rim we could cut their head off right on the stage. Mm -hmm. They said, here's a courtesy of Jesus. Right. <laughs> let Jesus kill them. Right. Courtesy of Jesus the Christ. Right. <laughs> this thing has gotten out of hand, man. Right. And they playing with our people who are psychic. Screwed up. Do you know now? Do you know now? Look at this thing here. You know now we got to even question whether black people think at all. <laughs> what we're saying, what we got, you know, one out of ten black people, they said that one out of ten. One out of ten black people think. What we call in thought could be a form of response. 
reaction, and a little bit of emotion wrapped in this deep emotion. And then we got a little bit of spiritual, because we're spiritual people underneath that. Every now and then that genius jump through and we do something great. But basically, don't think at all. We're talking about people, we got to even question. Now, how does the saying sound? This is, very, this is very interesting stuff. Number one, we understand that when we got our secret, that they meant for this to happen. We want to make a drone, brain dead, okay. grazing in the field type of person. Yeah, exactly. right. what they doing? But what happened was, when they got out of slavery, they, they were still experiment. They isolated us. And by them isolating us, we took the culture that was around us, took the scraps, and made a culture out of it until about in the 1950s. They were like, hey, wait a minute, man. Shit, these people done got a, a culture that in actuality is American culture. Because we, we, we tried to break away from the British and became damn hillbillies. And the only flair we got is American culture, is black culture. We got to bust this thing up. So we had developed a culture. Certain things was kicking in. What a little bit of education we was getting, we got 140 years of that. The genius that started coming in based on the spirit realm and based on the melanin, putting stuff back. So what we was doing was, because we was, see, the last time was a great man because he said, as well as Carla G. Wilson, that there's something wrong with the way the black people think. Right. But we had started, we had developed a culture in segregation that was conducive to sift that stuff out. So by the 1970s, if we would have been, I would remain isolated by up until about the 80s, 1980. Because the current report said if you don't fix this by 1980, it'll be a permanent underclass. Irreparable. Are non-repairable, and that's what we got now. But what it was also given a projection because they knew that they had torn down our doggone institution called segregation. Greatest thing we had. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. When you forced to live together. Yeah. So meanwhile, this thing, this segregation, it was like a doggone, it was basically a therapeutic remedy station that over the course of the 100 years, over the course of the 70 years, it started sifting. This stuff out, we became so, so fucking sophisticated. The, the white man was saying, oh shit, these motherfuckers is taking over. Mm -hmm. So then they broke that thing with the whole thing, sent in Martin Luther King, and you know the rest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see, because they had, a whole, they had a whole civil rights movement up in New York with Adam Clay Powell, mm -hmm. one in Mississippi, mm -hmm. and they wasn't talking about no fucking integration. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? They was talking about a little bit of equality. You see what I'm saying? But it wasn't talking about no integration, so they had to. Break this thing down. Send us into the workplace. Meanwhile, what happened was, is this. The segregation that we had, it put together a glue. And that glue, while we was there together, what it would do is, it would sift out all these pathologies and all this crazy shit that they left us a brain dead out of slavery. When they, when they integrated, the, we lost the glue. Because what happened with integration is like this. Because a white man kept saying, he said, I'll be a guy asked me, this was a couple of months ago, he said, why are you people always moving out where we are? I said, well, you got to understand, man, it's like a child that's never been able to go nowhere. Soon, and all of a sudden, it just gets the freedom to go, and it runs wild. Right. I mean, had some sisters like that, real nice sisters, decent sisters, but they, 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 the pops said, no, you got to be in the house. The school out at 3 o'clock, you got to be in the house at 4 o'clock, and they couldn't go nowhere through junior high school and high school. Right. And he uh, let them, and he let them out to go to college in South Carolina State. Shoot, they were screwing out a boat drawing with drawings. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, when I got to Benedict two years later, somebody said, hey, you from Mullins. I know some of your homegirls. <laughs> I know some of your homegirls. They straight up hooked the nigga up. You know what I'm saying? It was that part. I mean, these girls were going crazy. Right. And this way, no, these were decent sisters. But man, see, but they had been a, they weren't, weren't allowed to roam about. Right. To hell. When I got there, people was like, man, yeah. I said, shoot, is there any more sisters like that down in Mullins? <laughs> so we get ready to get on the bus and go down there. Nah. <laughs> I was like, no, that's a situation of something that went bad. The key here is that's what happened with us. <laughs> when they let us out, we just went running like dang wild beasts. 
it's still running. Right. The key is, is what little bit of glue we did have is now dissolved. Right. So what happened was, is what was meant for us based on the crazy stuff after slavery when they say we have closed all avenues of light and which all avenues in the slave's mind in which light can travel and we're not sure, but if we are sure, there will be nothing but the beast of the field. So we staged off that whole thing almost 100 years, 1865, 1965, and grew a subculture that literally was taking over America. But what happened was the glue has been dissolved, and now what was meant for us in 1865 is coming to us in 1995, 2000, or whatever you want to say, whereas we have become drone, brain dead, atrophied people, whereas we didn't even have to question whether we even think. 90% of black people don't even think. But see, what it is, is this. By us not, not being an analytical people based on slavery, we don't even analyze it no more. Because now we're in the isolation thing. I only gonna fuck with my family members. Lord knows that's hell enough. <laughs> so what has happened is, is we're talking about we gotta even question what thought is. Now, there's a flip side of that that's which is actually good. But the, we get on into that. But the point here is, what we have now here is we have a complete atrophy, which means the mind is dormant, and basically we're going on reaction, response, emotion, and a little bit of cliche threw up in that shit. And every now and then we get a spiritual thing, and you see what I'm saying. So we're talking about that type of a uh, 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 thing that we're actually dealing with. Yeah. Now, one thing, the reason why he was able to do it, because even in the 70s, they had problems with it. So we went on them jobs with chips on our shoulders. I, mean, I talked about that the, the last time. We had these chips on our shoulders. They didn't invent, you know, what it was, it was a defense system. Somebody burned you and stick you up the butt for 100 years, you got a defense system. That's just basically nature. Right. You grow an immunity to it. But what happened was the defense, so they came and said, these people got a defense system. So they came and they said, see, the white man has the power to define. So he came and said, your defense system, he called it a dog on chip on the show. Black people need to get rid of the chip on the show. So you up in the corporate world and all of a sudden you start looking like the dinosaurs. And you know these crap ain't about shit. And you get rid of your chip. You let them convince you to get rid of your chip on the shoulder. And now you're just a fool because you don't have no defense system now. So now it's always, oh, look at the cracker that did to me, Coca-Cola, look at the cracker. Motherfucker, you knew what the cracker did to your ass before you got on the job. <laughs> what the hell you got a cracker that did some shit to you? Like, oh, all of a sudden you done came from Mars, and I didn't know the white man was capable of this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> then here you go again with signs and shit. <laughs> he said, let them hold out. You see, this, this is good. Because this is distraction. And he, we're subjects. This man is so advanced until we're subject, until we're not even capable of maneuvering on the, the slightest level. Everything when we think we're maneuvering is some shit that he's already put together say they're going to maneuver this way. Right. So it's like ants in a glass. You know, the ants being enclosed in the glass. They know they know where the hell they're going. So they say, a great experiment. They're going to see how these slaves are. We're going to take a Thousands of them are sitting on South Carolina for the flag. You know what I'm saying? These niggas they ain't got a pot to piss and they ain't got teeth in their goddamn mouth. Mm -hmm. But yet they down here talking about a flag. Some shit happened in 1865. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But yet we slaughtering people. That's right. And we have gotten rid of all the projects in Atlanta is closed down now. And all the people gone. This is a nightmare. Right. They closed down all 20, 20, 25, 30 projects, housing projects, and all the people gone. You know what I'm saying? They kill them. Right. It's interesting because because they was feeding them through the dog on sewage the other week. One of my friends was down. And he was like, man, I he, he said I, uh, he said um, I work in the sewage. He was from the, he was from Chicago. He said one thing about the, that shit when it hits the water it turns salt. He said we hearing all this clunk 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 clunk. It's like body parts down there. So they feed the stuff through there now because if they burn it. All the bodies and stuff, you know, they yes, smell it on, yeah. so they feed it in that type of thing and probably dissolve it in some acid somewhere yeah. down the thing. But not after whittling out, they get all the melanated parts and stuff, but not after whittling out all the good fresh meat and then taking it and recycling it back in the dog on Burger Kings mm -hmm. and the stuff down there, you know, too. Mm -hmm. 
Burger Kings and all that type of stuff too. In the inner city, it's all people now. Soil and green. So we talk about a damn nightmare, but we're not capable. Soil and green. But we talk about a nightmare, but we're not capable of understanding some stuff right now because we're subjects to the United States government. Now, right now, I want to get into some things. Um, I want to get into some stuff right now. Another thing also, too. Now watch out for it, because you know Dr. Devil Black talk about a terminator seed. Whereas oh, yeah. this seed, you, you buy the seed, you plant the seed, whatever your crop gonna be, your corn or whatever. And then the next in the next year it doesn't, it's no good. It, it terminates. Mm -hmm. And so you can't prop, um, plant the same crop the next year. Mm -hmm. You gonna have so the government said, no, we're not gonna have the corn this year. And whatever seeds they sell, and that's what you gotta plant. And that's how they regulate the stuff. But also they're doing this shit with marijuana too. Now this is very key. You gotta understand this. I don't know, know if it hit up here yet or whatever. But this is what's going on. They can genetically alter the seed that has the same properties in it as crack. Mm -hmm. Because if you break the stuff down, a lot of that stuff still comes from some type of natural herb that right. they cook mm -hmm. and process. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking about what the coca, what the co cocaine is, the coca leaf or what? Coca leaf and all that type of stuff here. So they got some certain process in it all and stuff that what they do is, is they manufacture the seed. And the seed. When the marijuana grows, it's got the properties of cocaine or crack mm. already in the genetic structure of it because it was manufactured into the seed. Right. So when you get on this stuff and smoke the weed, you get hooked on crack. Right. The next thing you know, you out there with a glass pipe with a mini skirt on. <laughs> you know what you know. A glass pipe out there instead. With the worst profession in the world, crack hole. Yeah. Crack hole. Yeah. Crack hole don't don't know no gender. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying they, they, they do it right through the marijuana. See, we dealing with a diabolical beast. Don't just think that I'm just living in America and I'm just going around and do some shit. Right. You see what I'm saying? So whatever you think, that cracker got to give you that shit. Right. When he give you some yeah. stuff, he it's right there and you say, no, I grew the shit. No, you grew it from the seeds. Yeah. Uh -huh. From the other. You grew it from the normal seeds. But it's the same properties because it's bonded all in the whole the genetic structure or whatever you want to call it, the genetic uh, uh, molecular or whatever you want to call it. Uh, uh, not genetic, I'm trying to look for the word. Uh, uh, not molecular, that's human. Uh, 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 organic structure. You see what I'm saying? And stuff. So this is stuff that they're dealing with right now. This cracker, you think that you're doing some stuff, he got you at every turn on this thing. You see what I'm saying? Every turn. You see. Uh, right now, the thing you just need is some damn water. And uh, uh, some, some water and a lot of sleep. That's one of the keys now. One of the keys is the sleep. And it's not necessarily how much sleep you get, what kind of sleep you get. We talked about that before. The melanin of the ancient person used to heal overnight. <clears throat> they knew that that shit was that way with them slaves, too. So what they did was, the health food industry shuts down melanin. Let me show you how this thing goes. The melanin, in this particular book, which is amazing, your own body defense system. Y'all all right? Yeah. yeah. Um, where my book at? Y'all all right? Yeah. Now look at this. In this book, I'm curious how, I'm curious how in this book, and I'm going to put this back on the tape again, because I want to put it back on the tape based on the doctors. Because one of the doctors came up to me and said, melatonin is not coming from, and I did it on the other lecture, but I want to put it in this lecture. The melatonin is not coming from um, humans, it's coming from, it's bovine, it's coming from cows. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, I, I produced the information right in this book. Your, uh, your own body's natural wonder drug, it's only like $6. Now this is when it first came out in 95, paid a hardback, it's like $6 now paperback. But in the chapter, a billion year molecule, I want to put that back on the tape as, 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 as exhibit A, where it says that Aaron Lerner and then when they tapped into melanin in 1953, the guy Aaron Lerner, by mistake, they found out about this melanin. I don't even believe that shit because Hitler and them was dealing with this shit in the 1940s, 1930s. And before that, Blavosky, they was calling it for real, they was calling it a culture. They had several names for it. Right. So they just, what they'll do is they'll just say, well, you're going to be the one that's going to, um, um, going to uh, tap into a person that's going to discover this particular aspect of it. Mm -hmm. 
uh, uh, the part that we want on a scientific level, and they call it melanin. By 1959, they call it melanin. Now, they're going to tax into it and all, and they say the first thing they got to do is they got to find out about this melanin. They go and they go and get some cows, because they know cows got fine heel glands. But now, it took, I'm going to put this for the, uh, on, on, on again, it took 2,500 pineal glands from the cows to produce 100 milligrams of dried extract. Now, uh, uh, that's about like a salt sprinkled on, on a grain, on, on, a, um, uh, on an ear of corn. Right. What they were saying was this here, we know that uh, 500 milligrams is what, a tenth of a fucking aspirin. They tell you don't even buy nothing unless it's uh, 500 milligrams. Right. And here they talk about 100 milligrams. So that means in order for them, they took 2,500 cows to produce a tenth of an aspirin. That means they would wipe out every cow in the state just to produce five pills down there. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah, they got pills all over there. You can go to that Kroger or uh, whatever the supermarket is up here and get that shit. You see? So obviously this is not true. We know. But the movie. I come in peace with what I said the last time, and I talked about that. Yeah. Tell you that if one dose will make a thousand, no, one ounce will make a thousand doses. Mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying? One ounce will make a thousand doses. Right. Now, it's interesting because in this book, everything that they say melanin cures, we got. Right. No, wait a minute. Now, hold on. This is me. Somebody fucking with us now. Right. <laughs> Damn this. <laughs> This is some crazy stuff. They said it, it cures AIDS. Mm -hmm. We know where I got that. You tell you that, that there is no such thing as AIDS. They're killing you and call right. it AIDS. Right. You see. And you know damn well that they had a, 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 a they had a sexually transmitted disease. Everybody on this planet will be dead. Come off the dumb jump. Right. Especially all black people like say you ain't got nothing.